Hey, Browns fans, it's time to gear up for a pain-free 2022 NFL season for your Cleveland Browns with new friends of the show, Buckeye Law Group. If you've been injured in a car accident, a slip and fall, a work accident, or even if you've been buried into the ground by Miles Garrett or stiff-armed by Nick Chubb, you need to call Buckeye Law Group today at 1-800-411-PAIN. Their attorneys will fight for the money you deserve. Buckeye Law Group's attorneys have recovered over $1 billion for their clients throughout the entire country. So don't make the mistake of calling just any other attorney. Call attorneys you can trust. And best of all, they're Browns fans just like you. Call our friends from Buckeye Law Group at 1-800-411-PAIN. After 911, call 411. That's 1-800-411-PAIN. 1-800-411-7246. That's Buckeye Law Group located at 1300 East 9th Street, Suite 1210 in Cleveland, Ohio. Buckeye Law Group, proud fans of the Cleveland Browns just like you. Hey, this is DeAnthony, safety with the Cleveland Browns, and you listen to the Dogs Podcast. Go Dogs! Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Justin Charles, and Josh All. Hey, what's up, Browns fans? Welcome to a very special edition of the Dogs Podcast. Today we have a very special guest with us. Before we bring him in, though, remember to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Make sure to tap the notification bell so you never miss a new episode. Lastly, if you're looking for more dogs content, head to jointhedogs.com, become an official Dog Pack member on the Patreon page. So without further ado, we'd like to welcome back to the show, Brown Safety, DeAnthony Bell. Uh, He was our very first player ever on the show. Now he's our very first active roster player on the show. Huge congratulations from all of us, man. We're super pumped for you. Man, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you all. It was – so we had you on, you know, a few months ago when you first signed, and then – you know, we put out the interview and everybody kind of just like latched on to you. Like you were like, you know, magnetic. And as training camp started going on, you're doing things in camp. People are messaging us like, Hey man, did you guys see bell? He, he had a pick in camp today or Hey man, I heard he's doing really well. I think he's going to make the team. So it was super cool. Just watching your journey after getting to meet you. It was, it was awesome. And you were like the first name I was looking for whenever I was seeing the final roster stuff. So when I saw you made it, I was like jumping around my living room. It was awesome. <laughs> Hey, you and me both. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet. I bet. Um, so speaking of first things that you've done, you know, you got to be the first Browns player on our podcast. You're also the first returning Browns player on our cop podcast. Um, how special is it being the first player from your university, West Florida, to make an active 53 man roster? Um, you know, being the first at things is, is pretty special. So does that does that kind of like hold a special place in your heart? Yeah, yeah, I think it was real special. I say, I always say it like I've been saying the last few days. The way it lined up, it just seemed like it was meant to be, you know, being the first one from my high school, first one from my college, you know, and then first one on y'all podcast. It's a lot of first <laughs> so, the, way, the way things lined up, it just seemed like it was meant to be. Like, this is my journey. This is the way it was written. So I'm just blessed to be living in it and just enjoying it. To be honest, it's pretty awesome too. And I, you know, I, I follow you on all the socials. So I see like your college has been hyping you up and everything. And all like the people that know you from there have been hyping you up. It's just, I watch your Instagram story like every day, like all 47 <laughs> of them. And I'm like, man, this is so cool. Um, so then just some, some kind of background on how the process, because I would imagine, I don't know, and I don't know, you know, if any of our fans know, how does the process of, you know, making the team work? Like, do they tell you that you're going to make the team or is it just kind of a, a no news is good news thing? Like, well, it's Wednesday now and they didn't call me. So I guess I get to go in today. Yeah. So so the day before they was like, Oh, uh, you know, everybody had their phones on ring and we'll give everybody a call in the morning, you know? So I had woke up probably like eight then, you know, I ain't get no call. So then I was like, all right, I'm just go back to sleep. So I went back to sleep, woke up around 10, still no call. So I'm like, all right, you know, I don't know what's going on. So, <laughs> like 11 something i just end up going to the facility and then soon i saw in my locker uh andrew berry had called me he was like he's like hello this is the anthony i'm like yeah what's up and he's like uh yeah don't worry about this call this is a good call yeah i'm just calling to congratulate you tell you that you made the team so awesome. uh, they, they don't tell you beforehand you know i mean the people that know know you know people like miles <laughs> yeah, they, know. <laughs> they know but uh for us it's like you don't know until until you get that call and say you made it or you don't get no call at all. So they say no call is good. So 
I ain't had no call that morning, so that was a good thing. And I, I was super excited to hear that. That's got to be nerve wracking. I, I wouldn't be able to handle that. I'd be up at eight, and then I'd just be checking my man. I'd be calling Verizon. Hey, I don't think my phone's working. <laughs> <Yeah>. I'm <panicking. laughs> um, yeah, I, just, I just made sure I had it on ring. I'm like, let me make sure it's on ring. Maybe, you know, I wake up, make sure the volume up every time I wake up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I'd been. I'd have been losing my mind. Um, yeah. I know coming into this, I mean, the Browns have a good roster. That you know, we had a, a good roster last year. Um, coming into camp, there was probably only six or seven open yeah. spots. Really, like that's what a lot of people were saying. And then right. I know the league's full of undrafted guys, but at the same time, you're still fighting an uphill battle. You know what I mean? Like it's it's not easy for undrafted guys to make teams. Um, you know, and from the outside in, we felt like you'd done enough to lock up a spot. You know, but you know, we're biased. We're huge fans. Was there ever a time, like, did they give you any kind of indication early? Did you feel like you were safe or were, were you kind of like, were you nervous? Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I never felt safe, but I definitely felt like I put myself in, like, the best position I could have put myself. You know, because especially at the Jacksonville game, you know, I think <laughs> two, three days before that, Coach Howard had sent me um, a cut up of, like, uh, all the last year's takeaways. So, like, he sent me all the punches and stuff that they had punched out the ball last year. So for me, I'm like, all right, if he sent me this, you know what I mean? This is a sign for me to go get a takeaway. So I took that opportunity and made that happen in the Jacksonville game and then also made it happen again mm -hmm. in the last preseason game. So I think that kind of showed them, like, the things that they put in front of me I can put on the field as well. You know, I can, I can translate those things. So I think those kind of steps – helped me make it onto the team. So, I, And great. I know that's that's been a huge point of emphasis for the Browns this year. Is we had a pretty good defense last year, but takeaways were a little bit lacking. So for you to come in and get takeaways in games and all the picks and camp and stuff like that, I feel like that, that definitely helped you put your best foot forward for making the team. <laughs> so everybody talks about the transition from college to the pros. What do you think has been the toughest transition so far? Has it been the mental part of the game or has it been the, the physical part of the game that has been the bigger adjustment? And then was there ever like an, like an aha moment where like a play happened or something happened? You were like, this is football. I can do this. I, I've been doing this my whole life. Uh, I would definitely say probably the mental aspect, you know, because I know that a lot of people say like, you know, they thought that coming from D2 to the league would be like, just a huge adjustment but for me I think I was already pretty much bigger than everybody that was in D2 and you know just physically wise like my body was already I think I think was ready for this next level but I think mentally is you know you got to learn a lot more it's like it's a lot more to the game than there is at D2 level of course so I would say definitely the mental aspect was probably the hardest. I can imagine I, I know that that's kind of been like a lot of players sometimes that's their biggest adjustment is they go from a minuscule type playbook and then all of a sudden you get a 300 page playbook and they're like, Hey, pages zero through 80 are going to be for this game. We might only use pages zero through 30 though, but you better know the other 50 pages. <laughs> yeah. But see, that's one thing I can say about uh, West Florida and coach Douglas defense. Like it wasn't too much on like playbook wise that I really had to learn because at, at my school, we, we damn near ran almost everything that we run here, you know? So our playbook and my playbook in college was real thick and real deep. And I knew everybody's job in college. So coming in, it's like, I know everybody's job there and I knew everybody's job then. So I can do the same thing in this playbook and learn everything. So I think I came in and learned the playbook pretty well. That's awesome. Man. That's I think awesome. it was just small, like more of the, the small details in football, you know, like line adjustments. And then, you know, the hashes are different now mm -hmm. in college. So just small, small details that I had to get used to. Yeah, the the hash is so much closer, a lot more field to cover on the outside. Definitely. It make, it make everything look a little bit wider, but it's all the same size field. But it make <laughs> everything it, – it's a big difference. And people really don't even realize it, though, but it's definitely a difference. Uh. So you made it into a pretty deep DB room with guys like John Johnson, Denzel Ward. I mean, those guys are, you know, all pro players. Denzel Ward was the highest paid corner in football for at least like a day. Uh, <laughs> how have those guys helped you so far in your career? Has there, and has there been any one guy that you've been kind of like leaning on, picking his brain? We've seen a lot of guys on the offensive side of the ball kind of go into Amari Cooper for that kind of thing. He's like an old vet. Is there anybody on the defensive side of the ball you've been really picking their brain? Oh, yeah, definitely J.J., John Johnson. Yeah, I, I sit right next to J.J., and he always, you know, whispering little stuff in my ear like, oh, yeah, on this play, I see this, I see that. You know, that's what made me do this and that. So, and then I'd be asking him questions as well. I'd be like, hey, so should I have done this on this play? Or, you know, so me and him got that kind of connection where we, 
you know, it, we, don't, we don't got to talk as much, but when we sit beside each other, we kind of see the same things on film. And, you know, I, I think our minds are kind of the same. We like, even though we're sometimes I'm in a good position, I like to know somebody else's perspective to be in a better position. So I always ask him for that criticism and stuff like that. So definitely John. That's awesome, too. And we, I mean, we heard that coming from L.A. He was one of the leader of the team, so that's why we were so pumped to get him last year. Um, yeah. So that's awesome that he's doing that for you. Uh, so just kind of going into the Browns as a whole now, there's been, you know, obviously a lot of drama surrounding the team this summer. What's the vibe like, the vibe like in the locker room as we enter the regular season? Is it hard to block out that noise, or is it, is it kind of business as usual in the locker room? Yeah, obviously, I don't think it's hard for us. For us, we just look at it as, a hey, we're a team, and we just come in and work together as a team, and, uh, it hasn't been distracting to us at all. You know, I think everybody in there is pretty close. Everybody just work on the team orientated stuff like, hey, we're going to whoever comes to work, that's who we're going to work with. So we just keep that same mindset and we're going to keep going, keep going, trying to build as a team and come close as a team. That's good to hear, too, because from the outside, all the media stuff, and I know like we have a Browns podcast, but I don't really consider us media. We're not, you know, we're not quite that big, but it's they, they just always try to create so much drama. But then everything I heard out of you guys, you know, out of camp reports was this is like the closest team in a while and everybody's vibing on both sides of the ball. So that's good to hear coming from, you know, somebody who's in that locker room. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I agree. The wait is almost over. A new football season is about to begin. Get ready for the NFL week one action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. To celebrate the return of football, DraftKings is giving new customers a can't miss offer. Bet just $5 on any football game and get $200 in free bets instantly. Want more action for opening night? Everyone can experience the thrill of DraftKings early win promotion. Get up seven, you win. Bet on any NFL team of your choice. And if your team leads by seven points at any point during the game, you get paid instantly, even if your team loses. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code TPPN to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's code TPPN, only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. So without trying to get any, you know, I don't want to get any bulletin board material out of you. I don't want to get you in trouble week one. Uh, I was just going to, what's the vibe like on, on the defensive side of the ball heading into week one against our former QB? I know you, you know, probably never got to meet Baker, but a lot of the guys on the team did. Uh, I, I don't really think it's, you know, uh, the media always try to make it like, oh, it's a Baker versus the Browns thing. But for us, we just look at it as they Carolina, we the Browns, and we got to do our job to win. So we're not really too focused on, singular players we just work focused on doing our job you know we come in and talk about everybody do their job they say when we do our job we win so we just working about doing our job we feel like we do our job we can win so i don't really think it's like a emphasis on one person you know it's just hey do our job and do we know what we can do and we 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 can be victorious that's a great answer man good job (laughs) (laughs) no no bulletin board material to you uh so then i want to just kind of focus on you just personally so you you know you made the team. There's, I would imagine, like a sigh of relief, at least for a brief moment. Like, man, I, I made it. But now it's like, okay, back to the grind. What would you say is your your biggest personal goal, goal for the season? Obviously, the Browns. You want to win the division. You know, what go to the playoffs. But for you as a player, as a first year player in this league, what are you trying to to get done for the season? Uh, I think I still got the same mindset as when I came in. Make plays on special teams. You know, I just want to make my presence felt on special teams and give myself a name in the league and around the league. You know. I want people to turn on film on special teams and like, hey, listen, we got to block him no matter what. If we don't block nobody else, we got to block him. So I think I'm just keeping the same mindset I had when I came in, make plays on special teams. And that's kind of the mindset I had the whole preseason, but I just happened to start, you know, translating and making plays on the defensive side of the ball. And that, that kind of helped me out a lot too. So, but I think I'm going in with the same mindset, head down, make plays on special teams. That's good, man. I mean, that's, look what it's got you this far. Uh, and I, I think we're going to see you on the defensive side of the ball this year, man. I really do. I'm not just trying to pump you up. I, the way you played in the preseason, punt, I mean, punching the ball out, all that good stuff. I, I'm I'm just I'm super pumped to watch you play on Sundays. It's it's going to be awesome. Yeah, uh, I'm excited. So I, I put out some some que- I, I I let the fans know we were going to have you back on, and I told them I'd pick out a couple of my favorite questions for them. Uh, so this comes from Killer Shot Three on YouTube. It's kind of he just wants to know if you watch film all day because you're always in the right <laughs> spot to make a play. <laughs> uh, well, I wouldn't say watch film all day, but I definitely 
try to watch certain things that I know, like, okay, they, they kind of weak in this area. So I kind of try to put my emphasis on that point. And that comes with, like, punching the ball out, especially Jacksonville. They had played uh, the Raiders the previous, like, a week before, and they had, like, four or five turnovers. And I'm like, okay, they, they lose with the ball, you know, and it's just starting <laughs> season. So it's like everybody's trying to make a play. They're not too really worried about ball security. So that was one of the things that I could take advantage of. And, you know, that's kind of the same thing as, as the last preseason game. Running backs trying to fight for extra yards. That's the perfect time to punch for the ball. So I'm, I just look at those small details of things, trying to see what people do, what their weakness is, and I try to take advantage of it. Uh, I think you'll be a little bummed to know you're not just sitting in your apartment watching film all day. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then this one comes from Kenny Mack. He's actually in our Patreon. He's a Dog Pack member, and he's the Ottawa Browns backer president. He wants to know now that you've been in Cleveland and surrounding areas for a few months, have you found like a like a hot spot for food? What's your favorite place now in the area? I definitely ain't found no hot spot, but I did go to House of Creole, and that's probably like one of my my top spots right now. House of Creole is definitely real, real good. So <laughs> I ain't been to a lot though. I still got I gotta explore some more. So there's we'll some see. good places up there, man. There's some yeah, good places. Yeah, I heard. So I got I gotta do some more exploring. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask you this one because this might be the most important question you're going to get from us today. Um, Kevin O'Hara, who's a Patreon member from Scotland, wants to know what you think your Madden rating is going to be. Uh, I, already <laughs> seen, I already seen it, but I, already, okay. I, knew, they, I knew they were going to give me like a 60 song. I know right, it's disrespectful. Right. <laughs> That's what they do. It's, it's cool. It's cool. And they gave me an 89 speed. That's crazy. Okay. Hey, was it at least high, like a 67 or something, 68? Nah, I, I mean... I'm gonna take it. You know, I take anything that you know that's given to me. <laughs> Bro, move, go, go, <laughs> move, move, move. But yeah, I take, I take whatever they they give me. You know, I'm excited to have just to be on there. So, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna show them this season though. They gotta bump my speed up and my overall. They, they, yeah. I, 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 I guess I do got to ask too. How cool is it to see on a video game? How I mean, that's got to be like kind of like a dream come true. That's pretty sweet. Most definitely, you know, just being one of those people that played Madden uh, their whole life, you know, and I always used to play Madden, and now I can go in there and put myself in the game. You can put yourself in at quarterback? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm like Marco everywhere. I'm like Marco everywhere. <laughs> and lucky I can't edit myself. Everything be 99. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dan, I had a couple questions for you, man. Um, one of them, like your journey and everything is, is kind of crazy, man. Like you said, it was like divine intervention, but I kind of wanted to talk about, uh, your relationship with coach Howard and kind of how you were like a late addition to the East West shrine game. Um, and then just, you know, how things fell into place. Um, I heard after the Philly game, like when you got that turnover, you kind of looked over at the, the sideline and looked at him, made eye contact with him and everything. Yeah. So I just kind of wanted to like hear about how important that relationship has been for this transition for you, man. Uh, well, yeah, I had um, got to the East West Shrine game. And uh, at first I ain't know, like, I ain't know who none of the coaches was. You know, I got there a day late and then, you know, they was telling me, they was like, Hey, you ain't got to practice the next day, you know, cause you just got off a flight or whatever. And I'm like, Man, I ain't come out here to watch nobody else play. I came to play. So I practiced the next day, and then we did one-on-ones the next day. And uh, I think I had, like, three, four PBUs the first day that I got there. And then Coach Howe was like, man, dang, you don't play with no fear. Like, it's like you don't care who out here in front of you. You know, everybody knew I came from a D2. And they was like, he was like, man, it seemed like you don't care who in front of you. I'm like, I don't because <laughs> whoever it is, they got to see me. And that, that's all the mentality I always had. Like, whoever they put in front of me got to see me. So – that kind of carried on. And then when he called me, it was like, hey, you know, we want you to come to the Browns. I'm like, hey, we already had that connection at the East West Shrine. So let's let's carry it over. And now it's just been growing more and more. I love Coach Howard. You know, Coach Howard care about me more than just a player. You know, he called me and be like, oh, yeah, you good? Like your family good and everybody good? I'm like, yeah, everybody cool. And he sent me extra film. Like I said, he sent me the fumbles. Yeah. He was sending me tackle and stuff. So he always just sent me that little stuff because he know – once he send me something, I always put that emphasis on like, hey, coach, send it. That means that's what he want to see. That's what they want to see, uh, what everybody else wants to see. So I'm going to get it done. So, uh, yeah, I love Coach Howard for sure. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And then uh, the, the last thing I wanted to ask about, um, like especially with your journey, you went through four different schools, man. You took a year off. Um, what's the message to the kids, man? What's the message to the you know people that maybe – haven't had the opportunities or maybe are down on maybe what they can do as far as, I mean, your story is super inspirational, man. I, I think a, le- a lot of people are looking into it. And yeah. uh, so what's your message to anybody, you know, that may be going through a similar situation? 
uh, my message is just just keep on going, you know, keep on praying, keep on putting God first, you know, because everybody had I had those moments where I felt like quitting. But once I once I continue to put God first, you always find that little bit of light. It's like he always show you that little bit of light, you know, you know, he put you through there because, he know, you can get through it. He ain't gonna put you through nothing you can't get through. So every time I was in that dark moment, I, I just I talked to God, pray, call my grandma. She praying for me. Everybody praying for me. It's like I just find that little bit of light and it's like, all right, I got this sign. So I got to keep going. And, you know, you hit another bump in the road, but then you also get another sign. So I always just didn't worry about the darkness, but I'll take those little bit of signs and just keep on carrying and they build up. You know, those little bit of signs turn to one big sign like it is now. So that's a sign that shines so bright. Nobody can't deny it. You know, so I just keep on going. Just keep on pushing. That's awesome, man. Proud of you. I'm super proud of you. Hey, uh, <laughs> we, we joked because uh, we had your mom jumped in last uh, last call on Mother's yeah. Day. I seen her on TV on uh, Channel Five. So yeah. tell, her, hey, tell her she's getting famous out here in Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, I gotta tell her. I now. Awesome, man. Well, hey, we don't want to take up too much of your Saturday. We we appreciate you coming back on here. Uh, I know the season's getting ready to start for you. So you so you for to take time out of your day for us on a weekend, man. We yeah. appreciate it so much. It was awesome having you back on, and uh, I know. From everybody here and all of everybody who's listening, we can't wait to watch you on Sundays. We're super pumped for you. Like Justin said, it's like one of our own made it. We're super proud, and uh, good luck this season, man. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Y'all got to send me y'all number. We can start a group text or something so we can keep in touch, you know. Uh, abs- hey, I'll, yeah, sne- man, I'll sneak down under the field, man. Uh, I'll be there every home game, I'll just come down and, you know, you just can introduce me to any of your friends and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll take you to some start food spots. Text. Yeah, yeah, we'll take you out yeah. to eat, man. Yeah, but awesome. We got, we got to start a group text so we can, yeah, we can keep in touch for sure. Awesome, Absolutely. man. We appreciate it, and we'll make sure we hit you up. Thank you so much. And yeah, thank y'all. Bless. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast and become an official Dog Pack member and join the dogs.com. Dogs.